Mr Foreman here standing in a marvellous eucalyptus forest but I'm nowhere near my home country. This is my premier visito to the continent of South America. I'm in Ecuador which is probably named due to its proximity to the equator. Wilms is spearheading this mission. We're here for three weeks as an introduction to what this marvellous continent's all about. Leaving San Francisco, we soar over Texas, where the aircraft takes a southbound heading out over the Gulf of Mexico. A myriad of Central American countries drift by beneath us. We approach the huge continent of South America to land in Ecuador, in the middle of the world. Ecuador's capital city of Quito sprawls out for miles through a deep valley in the Andean foothills and is home to more than two and a half million people. So this is our very posh Habitacion here in Quito, with a view out over the Plaza Frosch, or the Frosch Plaza, I don't know. But I'm a little bit concerned staying at these um, luxurious dwellings that I'm gonna get a little soft. From Quito, we're heading north to the market town of Otavalo. It's a bit unsettling to be on a comfortable, almost deserted bus with not one chicken in sight. Having only a vague idea of where we are, it seems logical to catch a cab where we need to be. It turns out Wilmsy's pre-booked hotel arrangements have fallen through. The receptionist explains with a sympathetic, whoops, we are out on the street. Having our reservations fall through, Wilms is now trying to work out where we're going to stay. The look on that face doesn't give much hope, so it falls on me to save the day. A lethargic glance upwards reveals our imminent accommodation. Convenient and cheap. Our new room in Otavalo has worked out great. Not only was it a lot cheaper, but we also have a fantastic view of the market, which is why most people come here. It's not without its risks though. Follow me. If you want to electrocute yourself, you don't have to make much of an effort. Down below is one of the town markets Otavalo is famous for. The big Saturday market is a once weekly affair as the name suggests, while the smaller craft market is a daily event. And it's right outside our illustrious hotel. Convenient indeed. Feeling secure with our high voltage security system in place, it's a good time to wander out and explore a little. It's I see it, yeah. Oh, it is nice. Oh, in different colours. In this one. Cool looking names. The pipes are impressive too. The streets of Otavalo do make for an interesting stroll. Passing through narrow streets with colonial style buildings, churches, and a haphazard web of electrical work holding it all together. After a lengthy exploration, we find a little roadside bar for some evening refreshments. The Pisco Sour being the beverage of choice. Hey, 
Okay, so sort that somewhere. Oh. Where did I see that? It is selling. Eventually, the shisha pipe turns up. More of a Middle Eastern cultural experience, but a novelty nonetheless. We go with our favourite, the two apples molasses. Nothing. Nothing. You get ripped off. I'm ripped off. Try again. It's good to note the emergency exit, in case of an emergency, is the same as the entrance. Much easier to remember in case of an emergency. Today's activity involves a hike for several miles to the rural outskirts of town to visit a highly recommended scenic attraction. We marvel at some formidable home security installments, nearly as good as our hotel room's electric barrier. Another home security option intimidates would-be ne'er-do-wells. And a unicyclist causes a traffic jam out on the country roads. Wilms and myself have wandered about four miles out of Otavalo and we're going to have a look at this uh, Cascada di Pagucci. It's a, it's a waterfall, but it's a good one. We're going to follow a little trail down the road. A cobbled path leads through the forest, accompanied by golden grosbeaks. The trail terminates at the Pagucci Falls, cascading through a carpeted wall of dense jungle. I'm trying to figure out some of these birds. I know that I've seen some of them before, but I'm using this app to kind of help me out here. or shine, the daily craft market is laboriously constructed at the first light of day. As vendors prepare the stalls, others bring in carts loaded with goods. Still other hardcore fellows carry in giant backpacks that look like they weigh a metric ton. Tortilla Cuevas with cheese is coffee coming. I'm not really certain what to do with what, but we're going to work it out. We're going to do some haggling. And I'm going to show off my Spanish speaking skills. For, for uh, mujer? Hombre o mujer? Oh, hombre. Uh, either or. Either or, okay, yeah. ¿Cuánto cuesta? Ventisico. Oh, Ventisico. That's uh, that's um, that's twenty-five. <laughs> twenty-five. Uh, you have a price special, a special. Or vent, viente. Okay. Perfect deal. Out of the deal. And and Twenty. 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 We've just purchased ponchos <laughs> for, for mildly cool weather when the Swanee's just too warm. Make a stash of money out here on the street so everyone can see. <laughs> Make myself a prime target for thieves. Gracias, muy bien. Okay, what is this? <laughs> okay, we're poncho owners now. Let's go. Oh, the gold one's good. The gold one? I don't know that that's the color. It's got more of an African motif. 
color for or purple. Yeah. Or shine. Or or what? It's short. Oh, it's short. Okay. Oh, but she might like short. She is short. <laughs> Duck's disease. See? Yeah, I think she'd like that because she's shorter than I am, so it's a little see-through, but that's what the, uh, the, the, the alarm is for. ¿Cuánto cuesta? Esta te sale en 13. Um, 13. Thir oh, 13? I think I can afford that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. No? no, I think this is good. Okay. Maybe um, it's for my mother. Uh, and yeah. That actually might be too long for her. <laughs> She'd be tripping over it. Oh, I do. Might have to buy that dress for summer. Get it bigger? A little? Bigger. Okay. 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 You're gonna have to move somewhere, I think. Grab a seat. I was seat. gonna let the woman with the child. Oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Oh, oh, shift seats, that was a little more chaotic than uh, we're used to. <laughs> you can tell I live in the States when you hear a pop or a loud bang your duck. We're now making our way back to Quito on a clean, sparsely populated transport. To say this bus journey is quite civilised, the driver's actually quite sensible, and I'm feeling safe, not terrified. objective is to make our way to the monuments of the equator which I'm sure are going to be outstandingly impressive and we're going to take public transport using buses. Gracias. Amidst the chaos, we find ourselves one stop too far from our connecting bus. Wilms is working on a solution to backtrack. And then that should take us straight there. Waiting for over 40 minutes for a bus that doesn't seem to exist, we move to plan B. Just jump on any old bus. It's a shithouse plan. <laughs> the bus does take us somewhere. Today's plan is that we're going to go to the equator and we're deciding to take local transport and we're, we're, we're using the help of Google Maps, which is like the blind leading the blind. We're getting a good city to it, but we're getting nowhere near where we need to go. Google Maps keeps changing their mind on what buses and what routes and it's a disaster. We're abandoning that mission and uh, we're, going to go, go, we're going to go and see the Mother Mary on the hill. Alright, it's 40 minutes on a bus allegedly or 24 minutes in a taxi. I say we take a taxi. To the Mother Mary? Yeah. Oh, have you already said where, where we're going? Yeah. Oh, good. Which is where? Which is the Penasillo. The what? Penasillo. Mother Mary on the hill. That's it. The hill in the distance is our destination. Any good tourist attraction worth its salt has a trinket market. As for us, we'll wander over and see what this place is all about. So this day's gone nowhere near as planned. Instead of ending up at the varying monuments of the equator, we've, we've arrived at the winged virgin of Quito. It's possibly not the most flattering statue, but it does look pretty cool from a distance, and the views up here are awesome. In the tangled web of city streets is the towering basilica, our next stop.
We're here at the Basilica del Voto Nacional in the heart of Quito. It's the largest neo-Gothic church in the Americas. And our goal today is to get to the top. Hauling ourselves upstairs, we arrive at a balcony looking down to rows of pews. Lining the expanse of walls are stained glass windows and using my detective skills, I'm getting the feeling things are a little churchy. Higher still, we find ourselves in what I would call a really big attic, with a narrow catwalk to a steep set of stairs on the opposite side. A bit of a queue exists, as it's a one-way affair. Hey! Well up on the roof of the structure now, higher even than the pigeons dare to fly. We're faced with more steep, almost ladder-like steps, ascending up into the tower tops, and possibly within shouting distance to God himself. It's very dramatic. It's higher, isn't it? Yeah. It turns out we're not so close to divinity after all because those big clock towers over yonder are even loftier. So up we go on our quest for enlightenment. Once at the top, one feels a little queasy looking at the ground below. The workers constructing this behemoth must have had a lot of faith. Surely it's a free pass to heaven if you've plummeted to your death while building a church. Having not heard from God, it's a good time to commune with a spirit of a different type, booze. It's only three o'clock, so it might be a little bit early for a beer, but I was not gonna pass up the chance to have a cerveza in church. That, and we walked like 30 flights of stairs, so I kind of think that we deserve it. La Fiesta de Todos, this cerveza, is all party all the way. gets dark, the frosh fiesta begins to gain momentum. And after a few refreshing beverages, men begin to engage in that time-honoured tradition of fighting over girls. Fight correspondent Summer Wilms is filming on the front line, nonchalant about the risk of being clipped by a stray punch. Looks like everybody's had a wonderful night. <laughs> In the next episode, we embark on a journey to the famous Galapagos Archipelago. We set sail on a five-day cruise to explore these remote wonders of the Pacific Ocean. Join us for the Galapagos Island Expedition.